there are those who hate the truth. The number one thing is when I mention how black girls, I was very strategic and intentional when I said black girls, meaning not really women. You know, girls means that you've not matured into a woman. You know, women tend to have their own identity. Uh, black girls, how black girls act for white men. And then we use the term, the operative term act, meaning they're performing an identity. They're actually not being themselves. And we're going to get into that. And then we say white men. Well, they're empowered man or men. This is a term of empowerment. Um, the white male in our world, this planet Earth, pretty much has been dominant for about a century, which in the scope of human history is not a tremendous amount of time, but in the scope of your lifetime is pretty much everything. And that's critically important. Yeah, it's at 236,000 views. So this one has been doing numbers. That's really important because that is the driving force behind why this black woman, or excuse me, this black girl is performing this way for the white man. And I want you all to follow along with me. And if you're a black woman, you want to call in and speak up on it, feel free, but walk with me here. Now, we do want to acknowledge that the white man is falling off. I mean, clearly the white man is falling off right now. We're going to see the rise of the yellow man, the Asian, right? We are already creating these uh, crackpot theories that the Asian has higher IQ. You know, we go through these conversations as a human species ever so often, you know, when, when the leader is displaced. You know, this is no disrespect to her as an individual. Right now, we're giving a treatment as her being the mascot or the representative of the black female, the black girl, really, from a psychological standpoint, who's looking to move on up in the world. And we're going to get really deep here. I'm trying to figure out, like, do I want to go through some of the comments and, and break them apart? Or do I want to go straight into my education? I think I might go into my education. Rudolph sent tuition on Cash App. Shout out to Rudolph. Yes, indeed. L let's work. So I'm going to play this clip for you one more time, just so you know what we're talking about. Mark, teach Mark a move. Just teach Mark one move real quick. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, oh. So there's a couple pieces. Number one, I said teach Mark a move. You know, we're out in Vegas. Uh, we had just come out of a very popular restaurant in Las Vegas. I said teach Mark a move now. Uh, this individual, her background involves some dancing. So we know that she knows how to dance. And she's willing to show out. Uh, which is African American speak for you know like make make a scene and like you know be in the center of attention, which is fine. And I said show Mark because she had been ex showing demonstrating the whole day uh, a particular affection for Mark, and I think we all know why it is. We, I think we all know why it is. And one thing that is typical of the female, we expect them to be demure at some level, to be low key, not not to throw it at you, especially not in an aggressive way. When the woman becomes a pursuer of the man, she certainly is not operating in a feminine mode. She's operating in a hunter mode, which is more masculine in nature. When the woman is throwing herself at the male, it shows a level of desperation. Very common among these types. And there's some a lot of things we're about to break down in this conversation. Debreezy wanted to correct his super chat. He meant if you were black, she wasn't going to get up that easy. Correct. I, I figured that was what he meant. I didn't want to uh, change it, but I figured that's what he meant. So another thing you should note from a body language standpoint is where she's throwing herself at him. If you would observe the way he is reacting, he's not engaging her such that she reaches back and literally grabs his neck and turns him into a stripper pole. Actually, she turns him into a human stripper pole and continues with the antics. Brandon sent a cash app. He said, peace to the saints. What is the journaling app you use? The one recommended in Bosch University doesn't include features I'm looking for. Looking for an app with voice memo, photos, video, and written logs. The one that I reference in Bosch University is the one that I use. That's the one that I use. Okay. Um, we have Heels In came in. It, assuming you're talking about the digital one, that's the if that's the one you're talking about, that's the one I use. Heels In came on a Venmo. Shout out to Heels In supporting the work. Appreciate it. Caught up? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So she turns the gentleman into a human stripper pole. And clearly he's there enjoying the vibe and the experience, but he is not showing a particular interest for her, though she's continuously throwing herself at him. Because in her mind, she has decided that in this environment, he is her best opportunity. 
This is actually quite commonly a function of income. It's not a function of Mark being the best looking guy or the tallest guy or the most well-built guy or even the wealthiest guy in reality. It has much to do with the perception of what he might be because of the racial group he belongs to. And for the dimwits in the uh, chat, of which there are always a multitude, I saw one person wrote, he's not white. He's actually the definition of white. I know both of his parents. His father is German from Germany, born and raised, fluent in Germany, uh, fluent in German. His mother is Portuguese from Portugal, fluent in Portuguese. Now, uh, they're both European from Europe. That would be white. Europe is the factory of white people, in case you didn't know. So he is indeed white. Now, he might have a tan from travel, might have a big black beard, but the ball is white. And she saw that and we all saw that. And what I'm pointing your attention to right now is that she has what I'd like to coin as poor girl syndrome. PGS. She has PGS. Poor girl syndrome. And this is actually quite common. In fact, this does not only ail the black woman. This ails the Filipino woman. This ails the Latina. This ails any woman who comes from a retrograde economy, a woman who comes from a developing country, or a woman who comes from the lower class. Yes, you can find white women who are the same way. Albanians, Latvians, whatever the case is, they're in a, a, down, uh, a down economy. Yeah, they're going to try to catch a guy who's successful. Now, it just so happens that in our modern world, financial success or status is racially coded. In fact, you might say color coded. There's an expectation that at the top of wealth and power is the white man. Second runner up, you have the Asian man. Then you have others essentially. And at the bottom dead last, you have the black man. Huh? Yes. Wealth is racially coded. Hence, when they look at the white man, they see power and dollar signs, whether it's true or not. This is a stereotype, and we all know that stereotypes root from somewhere real. On Cash Up, we have Armand said, great breakdown on black culture. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. I appreciate it. And we, we just getting into it. And poor girl syndrome, which I've coined right now, a definition is behaving in respect to imagined traits and preferences of wealthy or better positioned men. So you're, you're behaving according to what you imagine this man wants, what his preferences are. You're imagining because you don't know, because you're not that race, you're not that culture, you didn't grow up in that income strata, you didn't grow up in his community, so you're imagining what he prefers and what he likes, and you're trying to perform that identity. Let's get into it. Ooh, we're going to get into this. And I'm about to bust out some images, and we're going to get deep. Now, here's another thing I want to point out real quick, and this is why women must be subject to men. A thing I saw commonly in the comments, of which there are 3,000, you saw many black females saying things like, oh, she's just having fun. Making yourself appear to be promiscuous, that's fun. Shaking your body parts in a sexual fashion in the public, that's fun. Misrepresenting yourself and your family, that's what you call fun. Well, see, I thought fun was like playing Yahtzee or, you know, watching a movie in the movie theater or, you know, playing a board game or watching a sporting event. That's fun. Making yourself the center of attention uh, through sexual means, that is not fun. That is a grab at attention. That's what that is. Now. Oh, and we're going to get into this. And by the way, any black women who are in the chat, no need to type. We'll give you a link so you can come in and say what you need to say. Absolutely. We'd be more than happy to do it. Now, let's break down the psychology of this beastly woman. Now, mind you, when I say this beastly woman, I'm not referring to this individual woman. I'm not referring to all black women. I'm referring to the common mindset in the black woman today. Now, let me teach. Let me teach. And yeah, shout out to the homie Mark. You did? And Jabrizi is back. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to Mark. It did agree with you, Jabri. Shout out. Now, let me teach. You're about to get more in this than you, you've gotten in any course that you've taken. Here we go. There are three racial categories Negroid, Mongoloid, Caucasoid. You might say, Mark, what about Latinos? What about people who are from India? 
Well, there's a triangulation, racially speaking. And, and what I mean by this triangulation, which is to say that there are three main racial categories, everything else kind of fits in between, meaning that it, it is not a, a perfect category that has its own set of distinct features that are remarkably different from another category. Let me illustrate, if you don't mind. Let me illustrate. Here we go. Check this out. Let me teach. So when I say that there's a racial triangulation, the first of all races, and this is agreed upon by the scientists, including the white scientists, is the Negroid, the Negroid, which is representative of the black. Then we also have, and this is in, not in order of creation, we have the Mongoloid. The Mongoloid is the Asian type. Then we have the Caucasoid. The Caucasoid is the white type. Now, understand this, and I'm going to draw this triangle in black because it turns out that genetically speaking, the Negroid actually contains the DNA to create all races of man. The Negroid can create the Caucasoid and the Mongoloid, which is why if you look at the Bushmen in Africa, they have an epicantic eye fold. What is an epicantic eye fold? An epicantic eye fold is the eye fold where the eye opening is more narrow. That's the epicantic eye fold, which we tend to think of as a mongoloid feature. It chiefly is. Hey, Rudolph came in on Cash Up again, said tuition. Appreciate you, sir. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And we have Barrick said, peace to the saints. You dig. And shout out to Mark, the Amazon pimpin. <laughs> you dig. And, oh, yeah. And to answer your question. So as we said, we said the Negroid, this is the black. The Caucasoid is the white. The Mongoloid is the Asian. Well, where, where is the person who's from India, Marquette? They don't quite look like the Asian you're describing. Where are they? They're right here. They're right here. They have some Negroid features. You'll notice significant dark skin. And then you look at the skeletal features. It's Mongoloid in nature. Or you might name another race. You say, Marquette, what about the Latinos? Okay, they might be in between here. They might have Negroid features and certainly have Caucasoid features, which is to say they're not a pure type displaying all of the things that are quintessential to a given category. So now you understand. And just to pictorially you know, give you some visuals, so as you see, we have the epicantic eye fold, which is chiefly Asian. That's kind of how we know the Mongoloid. When you look at the Negroid, we have the skin coloration, right, which you might say that's chiefly Negroid. It's unique to them. And when you look at the Caucasoid, they have a number of features that are unique to them. But we'll say uh, a great example of that, which you don't generally find in the others, is the light coloration in the hair or the coloration in the eye. So they have the eyes that are certain color. So those are some of the racial differences between the categories. Now, that's an important thing for me to first brief you on because you didn't get a proper science education because the white liberal woman who is taking over the world currently and going to drive it to destruction unless someone rises up, which is why we're here. Um, she lies and she says that race is a social construct. No, racial uh, race is a biological reality. I've just pointed out a number of biological realities that you guys already know. And we're going to get, we're going to get deeper. Yes, we're going to get deeper here, saints. So those are the differences. Now, one thing you have probably observed because it's clearly true is that mankind, the different racial categories, they were made in pairs, so to speak. You have black man, black woman, white man, white woman, Asian man, Asian woman, right? They're made in pairs and they all have distinct racial features. Now, as I pointed out, the white male is currently dominating financially and in terms of power, right? When you look around people going around the planet Earth conquering things, it's the white guy. He's in power right now. He's fallen out of power, but he's currently running things. Hence, if he is holding the most power as a group, even a white individual male who does not have money or power is still perceived to be more likely to be able to attain it. Huh? So he's viewed in a better situation. Now, this is what happens to the psyche of the black girl who has poor girl syndrome. This is what happens. Observe. You see his natural mate. 
She has certain racial features. What do animals do in nature when they're weaker? They emulate, they imitate the stronger animal. So if the white man is on top, and really the world, it's a man's world, as James Brown said, it's a man's world, it's a man's game. If the white man is on top, then the white woman's also on top. So if you want the strongest, most financially empowered man, what you have to do, you got to steal him from Becky. You got to steal him from Becky. And what is your presumption about what the white man likes? Well, look at his natural pair. The assumption is that he preferences his natural pair for she is a natural reflection of him on a racial level. Huh? So the assumption is that he preferences straight hair or whatever hair formulation the white woman's hair goes into. He preferences light eyes. He preferences fair skin. He preferences a narrow nose bridge. So if we're going to steal the white man from Becky, we being the weaker, the black girl, we're going to imitate the one we perceive to be stronger. We're going to imitate her. Here's an example. Boom. Boom, shaka laka. Now, this is disgusting. That is, um, those are two women that used to be black. They were born black. Who knows what they are now? Transracial. And may I remind you, race is real. Race is not a social construct. For there are realities of race. They go as follows. Based on your race, it will affect your build, your skeletal structure. I personally can look at an Asian individual, male or female, from behind, and I can tell you that they're Asian. Not only because of the height, but because of the actual skeletal structure and the portion, the proportions. I can tell. Skin color, obvious. Eye color and eye shape. Hair color and hair texture. Facial structure. You ever notice that Asians tend to have prominent cheekbones? You also notice some Africans have prominent cheekbones. You go to Zambia, a lot of those women have prominent cheekbones. Very beautiful trait. The black has all of the racial traits. We have Rakeley Swimming said, I called a mid-20s college white girl a Caucasoid last week, and she had no <laughs> idea what it was. Had to explain the Caucasus Mountains to her. Porta potty education, full of S. Exactly. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Are we teaching now? We teaching. So those are some of the things that allow us to identify your racial category on a physical level. As I pointed out to you, the black female seeking to steal the white man from the white female does what? Her best imitation. And Lord Jesus, it's an imitation. A bad one at that. On the left side, that used to be a black woman. I'll give you guys time to tell me who that used to be. It's sad when you got to pick up your computer and hold it close. I see you. Y'all picking up the computer, holding it close. You know, you remember who that was? No clue? I just can tell the stomach is different than the face. Oh, and coloration? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I want one of you guys to tell me who that was. Uh, I think someone might have it. Okay, well, with... Lil' Kim? That's right, Lil' Kim. And I'm trying to find a photo of Lil' Kim, like, in her natural state, how she actually looks, but I can't find it. Um, so I'm just going to give you a very old photo of Lil' Kim right now. So if you don't mind, let me know when that populates onto your screen. This is a young Lil' Kim. Now, because the black female is raised with high levels of self-hatred, she's never is really... You're trying to show? Yes. But I, I don't know why, who that random white is on the right. So let me delete that and, and find another one. So Lil' Kim, like most black women, most black females, she's, she was never herself. She was never her true self. Part of this is the failing of the black male. Huh? Absolutely. The male's supposed to be the leader. Yes, these black females grow up with such high levels of self-hatred. There's little Kim. That's what she used to look like. Now, here's after she was famous. I wish I could find a photo of her in high school just so you can see who she really is because she knows not who she really is. Let me see little Kim high school. I want you guys to see what, what a black girl actually looks like. You might have forgotten. Type in little Kim 1996. 1996? Okay, let's see. I want you guys to see. We're getting deep today. We are getting deep right here. 
She's you, you will not find Lil' Kim wearing her real hair. Ain't that a pity? Boy, the hatred is deep. Get out of get her out of there with them big old white veneers. Here's Lil' Kim 96. Come on, internet, don't fail me now. There we go. Boom. I'll put that side by side. That's Lil' Kim 96. What I want you to understand, ladies and saints, is that this is a deep level of self-hatred, but it also is the human animal behaving on an animal primitive level. Huh? This is what happens when you are in lack of knowledge, you are in lack of male leadership, you are in lack of male protection, which spans farther than just physical protection. Yes, a good father protects the psyche. Let's get deep. So look at the skin. Clearly, little Kim has bleached her skin for skin is a racial feature. And she's bleached it into the white woman's skin as best she could. Her hair was already permed out. She made it blonde to get even closer to the white ideal. She's trying to get whiter than white people. What I mean is whiter than the average white person. The Southern Europeans have dark hair. It's the Northern Europeans that get paler. They have less sun up there, ice up there, cold winters up there. So she's trying to get to the Aryan ideal. She's trying to please, oh boy, like that used to do that. She's trying to please him. And then you look at the eye colors. Yes, indeed, folks, you can't tell because she got those enormous lashes on. But yes, she's wearing colored contacts, colored blue, which is, again, the racial uh, feature of the Northern European. Same thing with this girl down here. Who knows who that is? Or shall I say, who that used to be? Yeah, they said Queen B, Beyonce. Oh, she's not a queen. No, no, no. See, because queens actually have power. Queens have enough power such that they can be themselves. You see, the queen doesn't imitate others. Others imitate the queen. The king doesn't imitate others. Others imitate the king. You'll like this one. Someone said, I believe it's pronounced Jay-Z's wife. <laughs> Nah, it, it's uh, she she don't belong to Jay. You heard me? She don't belong to Jay because she's not trying to she's not trying to look the part of a black woman. She's trying to look the part of a white woman because she's actually preparing herself to be attractive to a white man. Now, let us look at this juxtaposition here. We have Beyonce on the right closer to who she actually is. Closer to her reality as a black human, a person in the Negroid racial category. On Cash App, Adonis sent $50. Baller alert. Said peace to the saints. Somebody got to support this education, huh? Call up the United Negro College Fund. Because all the black folks I know went to school and came out and they still stupid. I need a refund. Now, on the right side, she has braids. This is a chiefly African black hair styling. On the left, she's permed out and maybe shermed out. Furthermore, her skin, they powder it up so that it has this coloration that is not reflective of their true complexion. Huh? So, yeah, here she is preparing herself for the white man. Now, let's get deep. I guess, er, get deeper. We already in here. Let me maximize myself. So, what you have is. An impoverished black female, that's, that's generally what black people are, they're impoverished, the male and the female. Ironically, though, whereas you have black American women say that black men are broke, it shows how thankless and brain dead they are. Why do you say that, Marquette? Well, I say that because the black American is the wealthiest black person on the planet Earth. Yes, I repeat, the black American is the wealthiest black group. Yes, the black Americans are the wealthiest black people on the planet Earth. Yet the black woman in America would call the black man broke. The only thing impoverished is your mentality, dear. And it's ironic that she would call him broke because her very existence only evidences that some black woman thought that he was wealthy enough to sleep with and procreate with. The irony. On PayPal, none of the above is back and said, keep cooking. Here's some more cooking oil. Appreciate you. Shout out to the one supporting the work. And if you're black, you should support this work. Because you don't even know who the hell you are. 
I'm the first person to tell you. Huh? You got these dumbass people calling themselves Eva Tunde. Can't even tell you who the hell you are because they don't know. Now, the black female in America and also in Africa as well, they're doing the same thing, chasing the bag, chasing the white man because they think that he's the bag. And it's not just the black woman. Look at the Filipinas. Yeah. You, you know how many Filipino women you see with white guys? Ah, they chasing the bag. They're doing the same thing. It's poor girl syndrome. On Cash Up, we have Ishmael says, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Yes. And so they do all of these things to visually appeal to the white man. But what about the behavior? What about the psychological things? Do you for a second believe that she said, I'm going to change my outer appearance and maintain my true mentality, my true thinking and behavior while I'm in the presence of this person I fundamentally consider superior? Absolutely not. She is about to give her best Grammy performance and try her best to hold it up over time. And the reason that women got offended when they saw that video clip that said how black women act for white men is because they wanted it to not be true. But how much logic would it make that you would emulate the white woman visually? Everything fake, fake skin, fake nose. Look at how uh, Kim Kim chopped up her goddamn nose on the right side she looks far more beautiful to me natural beautiful brown skin skin that shines in the sun skin that is like gold on the left her skin looks dead and pale and lifeless and then she has that goddamn hair hat on and look at her nose it looks like a creation it looks like she had the same bad dr michael jackson hat and why did she do that? She tried to achieve the narrow nose bridge that you would observe in the uh, Northern European. And let me break that down for you. And I've done it before. Our racial realities, those biological realities, are generally a result of environment, physical environment. The blacks, they generally will have a shorter nose, a wider nose bridge, greater nose uh, openings, nostrils. Why? We come from hot regions so that the air can get in to cool the brain, which is critical. The whites, ice age, came from places that are very cold. They have a long nose. Why? So that the air has time to warm up before it gets to the brain. So you're not bringing in uh, ice cold air into the brain. Why do they have hair that hangs down like it's dead? Because they come from cold places and they need the neck covered to be warm. Where do the blacks come from? Warm places. That's why the hair grows out and reaches up toward the sun with life. It doesn't cover the neck or else you would be too hot because you're in a hot region. But yet we have a lot of strange things in this era. You have dumb black chicks who want to look like the white girls. So they kill their hair with chemicals. Then ironically, you got dumb white girls. They want to look like the black girls and they want to go get this beach tan. They want to look like they're at the beach all the time. Well, that's comical because most of the Europeans we idolize, the blonde, blue-eyed ones, they don't come from places with sunny beaches. So where do you get this idea of a tall tanned blonde woman that doesn't even make sense most whites who come from northern europe are pale and don't do well in the sun but it's a mass psychology of misinformation okay we have rise and rise academy said finally caught you live peace to the saints true education in a real way peace to the saints on paypal mr tabbit is back and said saint i would like to answer the question about why i'm interested in linguistics but i do not want to deviate from the lesson carry on should he message you on sure. member site sure yeah mr. Tabbit, message him on the member site we have tyree came in on cash up and said peace to the saints i would have loved being in your class quet oh we was going up in a real way we was going up now so we have an understanding that women in general are never satisfied, right? The white one want to look like the black one. The black one want to look like the white one. But we know who's on top. It's the white one. The reason we say that is because when you look at the different racial categories, we find that they're all trying to move in the same direction. You look at the Negroid, the Caucasoid, and the Mongoloid. 
we see that they're all trying to move toward the Aryan ideal. When women get colored contacts, what color do they get? Do they get purple because it's a cool color? Do they get orange because it's a cool color? Do they get uh, yellow because it's a cool color? No, they get blue or green or hazel. They get the coloration of another racial category. They don't go out and get neon colors because they're cool. They get the colors that emulate racial features of a different type of woman. When women go out and bleach their hair, they go and bleach it blonde. When they color the hair, they color it lighter. Huh? When they go and chop up their nose, they chop up their nose to look like some imaginary Snow White Disney character, which actually doesn't exist because pretty much when you travel around, you see the whites actually have quite large noses, but it's the narrow nose bridge that you guys are trying to achieve. And when the black woman does that, we already have a shorter nose, right, than the whites, and it's not prominent coming from the brow. And so when you when you chop it more narrow, you have this very small looking Michael Jackson type nose. Hey, we have East Mokum said, I saw your sparring video. How is it determined how hard you go in this exercise? I always wanted to get into that sport for conditioning and self-defense. Keep up the good work. Appreciate it. So number one, when you watch these TikTok or um, Instagram highlights, usually people are going too hard in sparring. Sparring is to calibrate your reflexes and your comfort. The guy I was sparring, he's a champion golden glove, Southpaw, which is to say he has an unorthodox stance, which is harder to deal with. And he actually had a fight the very next day. So truth be told, he should have been resting, but he wanted to get some work in. So we gave him some work. So our goal was to touch him, but not bang him, right? So we're trying to touch him, show him where the shots are, but not hurt him or injure him because he had to go in tomorrow. We don't want him to be sore, beat up and exhausted. So we're going, you know, we're going at a good rate. We're going at a competitive rate, uh, but we were not being aggressive. And he's an A1 fighter. I mean, that guy is going to go pro. You're going to hear about him. He's an excellent fighter. Thank you for that question. On Cash Up, we have Vernell said, keep cooking. People need this knowledge. Peace to the saints. Indeed. And this is life or death knowledge. This is life or death. Why do I say that? Look at these women. Look at this woman in the upper left corner. That is death that you see on her. That is death. She has tried to kill what she actually is. That's self-negation. That is death that you see in her dark eyes. This is life or death knowledge. Knowledge of self is a life or death matter. When you hate yourself and don't want to be what you really are, you might sometimes try to take yourself out of this world. And that is what many are doing. Huh? Now, real quick, let's, let's study the mentality, if you will, of these brain dead black chicks. And I love black women, but I love women that are actually black. You heard me? The ones that are actually black, not the ones that are fake black. And they have to know what black is, which is deeper than your skin color. It is deeper than how you speak your English. Caplin sent tuition. Shout out. Appreciate it. So now let's take a look at some of these comments, right? And I appreciate the uh, the hardworking individual who went through and let everyone know that we had this live session. And, and mind you, you got big mouth black women that all of a sudden they're quiet as a church mouse. Have you ever heard a black woman being quiet? You ever heard of a black American woman being quiet? Now, they got 3000 goddamn comments on this video. But when a black man comes up and shares knowledge, they're scared and terrified. The black woman is terrified of a real black man. Why? Because it's like seeing Bigfoot or the unicorn. You've never seen one before. It's a terrifying, powerful thing. It's not only the black woman that is afraid of the black man. Many others are. Most of your YouTubers are afraid of me as well. Let that be known. But they had big mouths, 3,000 comments. We went through, replied to 500 of them. Yes, indeed, 500 of them. None of them would show up. None of them will show up just to express themselves. You should wonder why. Why is that? 500 of them, none of them will show up and speak their piece. But I promise you one thing. As soon as this live session is over and you can comment below the video from the anonymity of your, your keyboard and you can make up lies and try to excuse away your filthy self-hating behavior, oh, they'll be in the comments. 
Same thing with the nerds and the, and the haters. They'll be in the comments, but they will never come on and represent themselves. Cockroaches scatter when the light is out. And there's a bright light of education today. May there be some who will learn. Let's go through and hear the stupidity real quick. So this person writes, she is who she is. It has nothing to do with black women as a whole. Oh, don't you wish that were true? I absolutely wish that were true. There are very few who are actually individuals. Listen to me. She is who she is. Let's see how much of an individual she is. Is she wearing makeup like every other woman? Yep. Oh, seems like she's following the crowd. Is she wearing fake hair like every other black American woman? Yep. Seems like she's following the crowd. Where'd she learn that from if she is who she is? No, much of who we observe people to be is a result of culture. It is a result of enculturation, that which you are taught by the society. Very rarely is it the result of an individual choice. There are very few of us who are individuals, which means that our mind is turned on. Most of your minds are turned off. Huh? No. She is typical. She is not an individual. And they try to excuse it away by suggesting that, no, that's just her. No, she is a good representation of the average black woman today. I say that as one who has lived in Philadelphia, Baltimore, uh, St. Louis, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and the list goes on. I've seen the black woman. This is her. Another one writes, all I see here is friends having fun. Has nothing to do with race. Do you want to make that bigger? Or you oh, yeah, I do. Thank you. All I see here is friends having fun. This is a dangerous mentality, which you must stay away from. This kind of stupidity, this is a specious argument, which is to say it is deceptively attractive, seemingly plausible, but errant, illogical. I just see friends having fun. Do you know that they're friends? Actually, Mark just met her that night. They're not friends in actual fact. Furthermore, because something may appear fun, that doesn't mean that it's right. I promise you that. That doesn't mean that it's right. Do you think people who do evil might do evil with a smile on their face? Do you think a predator, a sexual predator, when he is able to capture his prey, you think maybe he might smile? Maybe he might look like he is having fun still while doing wrong? That is not an argument. It looks like they're having fun. It's idiocy. Clearly comes from a female, and I love women. They're of love. They tend to not be very critical of the world. They're just having fun. Oh, that's cute. No, she's making herself look like a harlot. And I don't say that to disrespect this individual woman. I like her personally. But this is a common thing you observe in the black female. You see them on Instagram, on TikTok, twerking in restaurants, twerking in public places, making us appear to be a low-class, immoral people. The black woman is promiscuous. If she wasn't promiscuous, we would not have such astronomical levels of STIs and single family homes. Now, I'm not saying the guys are any better. They're indiscriminate and have low standards. Having intercourse with these fat, beastly, masculine women, they're low. I just speak the truth about both, about what is typical of both. And mind you, if you're a black woman, you probably have a big mouth. Bring your big mouth here. I will let you speak your piece. But they are all silent because they can see and subconsciously they know the truth of things. The truth is terrifying to the wicked. Furthermore, let's see what other foolish things they say. Y'all make everything about race. No, we don't make things about race. It just tends to surface a lot, especially when you're dealing with people who are provincial. For example, you wrote y'all. Are you from Texas or are you speaking broken English? 
also known as Ebonics, also what has been wrongly called uh, Black American English or African American vernacular. See, you're speaking in a racial language, really coming from your ethnicity, but it is only the Black race that speaks in this language. Unless you're a white Southerner or you're from Oklahoma or Texas and you're not. So race is written all over you. Your ethnicity is what you're representing on a regular basis, even though you don't know it because you're so dim-witted and provincial that you're so damn black, you don't even realize it. You heard me? And there's nothing wrong with being black if you're black. Nothing wrong with being white if you're white. But don't say that things are being made racial when they indeed are racial. Huh? Carrying on. Look at the stupidity in these comments. Then someone writes, Becky was clearly jealous. I think Becky is a pejorative for a uh, white woman. And you know what? There's, there's truth there. The white woman was, I don't know if she was jealous of the black woman or jealous of the black woman getting attention over her. And I don't think this was racial. I think this was a woman thing. You know, they, they want attention. And she sees this chick is getting more attention. She ain't pleased. So absolutely, she side-eyed the little bitty. Shout out to Rakeley. He writes, I'm 6'8". God damn. Throw your boy a few inches. Pause. I'm 6'8". Solid five figures a month. Sound white. Black women as a whole are the least welcoming and warm. Let's talk about it. Yeah, let's talk about it. Rakeley Swimming, let's talk about it. Because you know what? You're speaking the truth. Because many of them are impoverished and dim-witted, don't know what a man is, they only have their imagination of what a man could be, which is the white man. They only have an imagination of what a family could be, which is the white family they see on you know, popular movies like Home Alone. When they see you, they don't understand. You see, they see you, you're a high-earning black man. Uh-oh, got to scratch my head. He's not what I'm used to. They see you, you speak well. And if you are as articulate and eloquent as a white man, when they observe the very same trait in you, they're scared. And so they start to stigmatize it and say, you talk white, rather than the truth being you speak well. Huh? Yes. And you know what? It's deep because they hate themselves so much on a racial level that they cannot accept you. They cannot accept you because you being a black god, 6'8", earning well, speaking well, looking good, oh, they must rebuke you because you are a representation of them. And they do not believe that anything black can be good. So they must reject you and carry on in their beliefs in white supremacy. The only problematic white supremacists are the blacks, the Asians, the Latinos, those who are not white. Beautiful thing to be white and be a white supremacist. It makes perfect sense. But to be black and be a white supremacist, oh, it's a, it's a sad reality. huh? He writes, it's a look of disappointment and disbelief. Oh, I agree. I agree. He writes, like I'm an illusion. See, we already talked about that before I even read the whole thing precisely. I experienced the same thing because you have dim-witted, hair-hatted hooligans at this very moment in the chat saying things like, oh, blah, 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 you dusties. Now, I agree. Most black men are dusty. He ain't lying. I'm, I would never defend the, the state of the black male today. It's pathetic. In fact, I'd be right there with you condemning it. But I would go one step further and actually teach and train, which is what I do on a regular basis, lifting them up. First place to lift them up is mentally. And my dear sister, the first place you need to be lifted up is mentally. And if you were wise, rather than being a demon in the chat, you would join on and share some knowledge, maybe pick up some knowledge, but you would stay a demon in the chat because you would hate to speak to a black man like me. You'd hate it. There was someone that used that word. Um, so I'm putting the link in the chat. For oh, her. She, she'll never click that link. She'll never click that link because when she gets on and she wants to say, oh, black men are broke. I'm like, oh, that's funny because I have a Maybach in my driveway right now that was just dropped off to me. And I 
have a Lexus also in the driveway right now. And I also have an I-8 in the driveway right now. It's about a million bucks damn near. Okay. So what are we talking about? What are we talking about, love? They, they don't want to come and have a conversation with me. It's strange. In a million dollar. Yeah. House. Right. Right. Yeah. They. I didn't want to throw that out. There. I guess I figured they assume if you got a million in the driveway, you, you're in the. Oh, yeah, and also don't forget the Rolls Royce. Please forgive me. I forgot the Rolls Royce. Please forgive me. So, yes, we're talking about a million dollars in cars. Hey, That's four cars, right? Yeah. That's four four luxury cars. Yeah. At this property. Got you. Hey, we have Paul said, as I observe the results of a society ruled by weak men and unruly women, I now understand why our ancestors were ruthless and uncompromising. Carry on, Saint. Indeed. Indeed. We have Nick said, so many facts being spoken. I fully back this message. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And I, I will point out to you, there are so many false prophets among you. There are so many dishonest teachers among you. They're panhandling preachers. They give you a kind word to comfort your weak psyche. Oh, black queen. The black woman, you are a queen. How, Sway? In what society has a queen been the one that emulates others? If you ever listen to the Spanish language that is coming from Spain, the European country that created it, they have a lisp in their Spanish. Instead of saying Ibiza, you might say Ibiza. Their Spanish sounds more similar to what you might hear in Puerto Rico. There's a lisp on their Spanish. And the story goes that the reason there's a lisp on their Spanish is because one of the Spanish kings had a lisp. And because he was the king, he was in power, he was royal. His mistake became a merit. His deficiency became a merit. They said, if you have a lisp, we have a lisp because you're the king. We emulate you. There's no one on this goddamn planet that emulates the black woman because she doesn't even know who she is. Hey, on PayPal, we have none of the above is back and said the black supremacists are and the pro blacks are the same person. Yeah, let's talk about it. He said the what? The black supremacists and the pro blacks are the same person. Okay, I'm not sure I understand that one. Who said that? None of the above. Okay, he said the black supremacists and the pro blacks are the same person. Yeah. Curious. Now, mind you, they do the same thing. They babble in the comments, in the live chat. They never come on. As soon as I end the live stream, they're the first one in the comments. Oh, you're wrong. You have a platform here. Come tell me. They'll never tell me. That's how powerful the truth is. That's how terrifying I am. It's not only to these dim-witted broads. I'm terrifying to all of your favorite YouTubers. Carrying on. So you get some more of the foolishness so we can teach. Then another person distracting from the topic. This is what people who are wicked often do. Distraction, red herrings. They write, now let's do one about black men trying to act white for white women. Oh, that's fascinating. Let's talk about it. Hey, before we do that, Rakely is back and said, Saint, that may be the first bold-faced lie I've seen you tell. The Skittles imita imitate oh! the black women. Peace to the saints. Which makes sense. The deviants, right? The deviants. The people who are sick in the society. They imitate the broken character, the misfit. That makes sense. Thank you. And that is correct. Because when you observe a, a guy who guzzles Skittles and he does his best imitation of what a woman is, which is not a woman at all, he's behaving like the ghetto black woman. That's fascinating. Boy, I like that. That was, that was sharp. That was sharp. Haven, who you also got to see yesterday, said, peace to the saints, all facts. Also, the sparring footage was dope. Low-key forgot about that day. You know, in Haven, it's a beautiful thing. Shout out to Haven. He actually has a lot of a lot of the footage was of Haven sparring. He has good hands. And I want you all to know that the beauty of our lives is not what you spend. It's not what you have in the bank account. It's, it's being together with good people. And that's why it's always a pleasure. And that's the power of what we do here within the SAS and you did. So let's talk about what this dumb dingbat broad wrote. Let's talk about the black guys who act white to be with white women. Hold up. Hey, I'm on. now this is crazy because check this out. I just showed you all the appearance 
of black women who aren't even with white guys. They're trying to look like white women. They ain't even with white dudes, but they're still trying to look like white women. And in many cases, they try to behave like white women. That's why I said the psychology, how a black woman behaves for a white man. Now, they can only keep it up so long before that bad attitude comes out. They can only keep it up so long before their lack of house training surfaces. You see, you can only fake it for so long. He says, meant the black white supremacist. Yeah, I figured that had to be the case. So check this out. Take a look at this. They said. Black men acting white to be with white women. Nah, I I don't think I've ever seen that. Because often when I see black men with white women, when we're talking about everyday people, we're not talking about celebrities and athletes. We're talking about everyday people because that's most people, all right? So if we take a everyday people and you look at the average interracial couple, you got a black dude who looks Plenty gutter. You hear me? He tied it up. Looked like a drill rapper. Looked like a drill rapper. Talked like a drill rapper. You can't understand a damn thing he's saying. He mumbling. So he doesn't have the tonation of a white man. He doesn't have the English skills of a white man. And even if he did, he damn sure ain't trying to use them. Tied it up. Looking like he about to drop a mixtape. Chains on. Jordans. All that other stuff. And the white girl who's with that guy. The average black guy, usually she's either playing her part. She's like, hey, my name is Caitlin. And she looks and behaves like Caitlin. She's just a white girl being a white girl. Or you got them gutter raggedy white hoes that want to wear some patent leather Jordans. You heard me? She wearing J's. Those are the ones I like to stay away. That's just me, though. Yeah, she's trying to emulate the black woman because she's trying to take the black man. Or she actually grew up in the gutter. She's being herself. This is the culture she grew up in. She's being herself. But never in life, when you're looking at everyday black folks, do you see a black male trying to behave like a white guy to get with or deal with a white woman? It's ludicrous. In fact, we often hear, once you go black, you don't go back. Where does that phrase come from? Does that come from black women being desirable? Hell nah. That comes from black men being desirable. Huh? So don't be foolish. It sounds stupid. You're making up things to make yourself feel better. Now, are there black men who prefer white women? Yeah, these guys are probably messed up in the head. You might take example, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods. Look at Tiger. He loves them white girls. Now, shout out to Tiger, because when he get his white girls, he's skimming off the top. You heard me? The boy taking the cream of the white girl crop. Shout out to Tiger. It block this dumb bitch because this dumb bitch. Wait, hold on. Dumb bitch, do you want to come on screen or are you just going to keep on babbling your broke ass lips? I will give you a chance to come on screen before we block your raggedy ass. Now, shout out to Tiger Woods because the boy getting high quality white woman. You did. I know the white boys hate Tiger. I mean, goddamn, this boy getting them Norwegian, Swedish models. And you hear me? And just piping them down with that black athletic D. You hear me? But here's the thing. Tiger is a golfer. Golf is a white sport. Can we live in reality real quick? Golf, hockey, those are white sports. Oh, and by the way, wealth in general lands you among a lot of, here we go, white people. Okay. Yeah, wealth lands you among a lot of white people. Lots of typos in all of her messages. Okay, yeah, get that bitch out of here. Uh, Block that raggedy-ass food stamp, having ass, EBT spinning ass, wig. This bitch go to sleep in wigs. This do, Are you supposed to wear wigs to sleep? Bitch be waking. Anyways, carrying on. Back to Tiger. He's a wealthy man. So by mere result of wealth, It puts you in environments where there is a lack of black people in general. And if you do see them, they're usually, oh, hey, sir, opening the door when you come in or they're cleaning up on the custodial side of things. No disrespect to black people. I just remember when I was walking into my office in Chicago, there was a janitor there who had came to talk to me one day when I was leaving out and told me, young brother, young Pharaoh, you are the only one who has an office in this high rise. I'm proud every time I see you. 
which is to say, if the goddamn janitor had to pull me to the side to give me an inspirational message as though I'm the black messiah, it's because there ain't many of us. No, not in them high rises. There's not many of us. So how is it you expect Tiger Woods to date black women? There's not many around. He's wealthy. And black people are fucking broke. That's just the reality of things. Now, granted, now, granted, I don't think he really check it for black chicks like that. I don't think he is. And with the attitudes of some of them, I can't blame them. I can't blame them. Personally, I love black chicks, but you got to have natural hair. To my black women, I love you. I need you with natural hair. I want, it's not like I'll deny you. You hear me? If you got a good attitude, I'll take you with the wig. I'll take you with the perm. But I prefer you with natural hair. Love yourself. I love you. Love yourself. God damn it. Carrying on. Oh, yeah. So here's the funny thing. Being that the male is always the leader in the dynamic, when you observe a black man, white woman relationship, the black guy still being black. You heard me? He's still speaking in slang. He's saying shit to the little white chick, confusing the shit out of her. Eventually, her white ass going to catch on. You heard me? Yeah, he's still doing what he do. But when you see the, the black woman with the white guy, oh, Lord, she didn't did the most miraculous change up. This brought them went Stacy Dash. You look like, bitch, I could have sworn you was from Compton. You talking like you're from the hills of Beverly. Oh, they pull a tremendous change up. Oh, yeah. So, no, we're not talking about the same phenomena. Man, this is not unique to the black woman. Women in general, you're the follower. The man's the leader. You're the follower. So at some level, yes, you're malleable. Of course, you want to please your man. But the challenge with the black female is that she's using her imagination to guess at what a man wants. And subconsciously, the black female, when she deals with a guy who's not black, oh, she gets the most feminine little thing she don't get a normal self-respecting white guy she don't get a white guy that's a normal dude that a white dude in kentucky or texas will respect no 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 she get the scrawniest weakest weirdest wealthy white guy that she can possibly find to dominate and fleece for his motherfucking money huh because that's what it's about the motherfucking money which is why when you hear uh, the ironic insult from black women, like, y'all dusty, y'all broke. Well, that's funny because you're broke. <laughs> like, how the fu- what the fuck are we doing here? You got a broke bitch calling dudes broke. Like, bitch, you broke. And it's amazing that you broke because you got something in between your legs that can make you a fortune without you having any skills. So how you broke calling me broke like I'm a jerk. I'm broke. And I'm trying to earn something. You broke and you sitting yet on a goddamn gold mine. Come on now, you lazy hoe. Carrying on. I mean, these hoes is on here doing tricks on TikTok, you know, twerking for the free. They ain't even making no money off of their hoe behavior nowadays. True comedy. I'm going to take a pause for the cause, give you guys some time to go ahead and hit that like button. And as well, um, you know, send in that tuition because if this ain't education, what is? What is? And if you black, if you black, listen, let the white folks take a break. Let the Asians take a break. If you black, send in your tuition right now because I'm your black daddy. You heard me? I taught you all the things a good black father should have taught you. The knowledge of self, which you are greatly devoid of. And let me tell you something about black people today. They because they grew up in an integrated society. Instead of a segregated society, they didn't learn how to build and do for self. So they wait. They wait on someone else to fix their roads. They wait on someone else to fix the policing in their neighborhood. What do the Jewish people do? They build the hospital. They have their own police. You're like, Marquette, is that legal? It, it, don't, it don't matter. They did it anyways. But what do you do? You wait for the white police to treat you better instead of creating black police. That you run, you wait. If you're a black person on this live and you haven't sent intuition, send it. I'm your black university. Uh, shout out to Jay. He writes, Peace to the Saints. For your app course, is 5000 in initial capital enough to get started after going through the course? Uh, and can you just expound on the course a little bit more? Uh, this is a good question. So number one, it's not a course in the typical sense you would think. It's actually much better than that. It's a practicum, which is to say that you're getting the knowledge. So you're, you're going through and I'm explaining everything that you should know in a lecture format. You're also engaging in discussion 
and action, which is to say you're helping build the product as we go. You're engaging in the whole aspect of the software business. And we've already probably done about six or seven practicum sessions. We'll probably do another 20. I highly advise you join. Secondly, with regards to capital for the software business, um, 5K depends on the kind of application you're creating. Frankly, if you get a team together, you could do it for zero dollars in a literal sense. I know this. I've done it. So that depends on what you're doing and what your team is. I highly recommend you join in as much as what you're going to find in life when you get experience is the things you build with men, the time you spend, the relationships you create. One of the guys who's actually taking the course is a software developer. So say you took the course, you made a friendship with him and you said, hey, I have an idea. He says, oh, talk to me. And you share the idea. It's a good idea. He might build the app for zero dollars. So business is something you need to. It's a sport that you must practice to learn. You understand what I'm saying? And so you're getting it from someone who really knows and who has made money. You could go to one of the best universities in, in the country and get a good software development course, but you would never know how to put an app on the market and make a dollar. You'd never know that. Oh, yeah. And anyways, for those who want to know, I think that course is at thesassin.com. T-H-E. In the Thank chat. you. We have Chris came in with tuition. Shout out to Chris. We Appreciate have you. Isaiah said, can you speak more on the men's retreat in March? Peace to the saints. Sure, really, I shouldn't, to be honest with you, because it's overselling and we might have to get another villa. And I'm just like, damn, do I really want to do all that? And like, how many people should we realistically pull up in their country with? Like, we might be causing issues. We're going to be too deep out here. But long story short, uh, this men's retreat is going to be an epic situation in which the men get together. And I've made arrangements for uh, we got some villas for everyone to stay in. And we're going to exercise every day. First thing is going to be a good time. Uh, but the most important aspects of it that this is circled around is taking you through a process of getting your own handmade suits from scratch. We're going to make you three suits. We're also going to give you three dress shirts. You can design something super player, everything down to the button, the pockets, the stitching color, everything. Um, we're also going to have a handmade pair of shoes, which most men, even wealthy men, don't even know you can do that. So we're going to have a pair of dress shoes made, handmade from scratch for you. You get to pick the colors, pick the leathers, pick the finishes. Is it wingtip? Is it an ankle boot? All those things. And the neat thing, when your shoes are done, it's not a size nine. It's not a size 10, 11, 12. It's your size. It's made to the actual size of your feet. So if your left foot is bigger than your right foot, those will be the first pair of shoes that's ever fitted perfectly. And so we're going to go through all that. We're also going to do some sightseeing and we're going to do some uh, some touring in this particular country. It'll be a great time. And all the travel, uh, once you're there, all the transportation is covered uh, on ground after you check in at the villa. Everything for that whole week is covered and included in the price. To make it easier, you pay for your flight there and back. You pay for your Uber to and from the airport. But once you're at the villa, you're good to go. You're good to go. And you do have to have a visa, but we'll teach you how to get that. It's yeah, very easy. Very simple. He came right back, though, with $50. It's the same person. Baller and alert. As they said, my bad, proper tuition sent. In a real way, shout out to the bosses and the ballers. You dig? We have Chung said, tuition from a mongoloid. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Danny, you told them to take a break. He's still, he's still <laughs> in it. Danny said, right. new nickname, Scotty Pimpin. Scotty Pimp. I like it. I like it. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> we have Skull Bones sent tuition. Shout out to Skull Bones. Write that Scotty pimping down. I, I like Idris that. spent tuition. Shout to Idris. Charles said, peace to the saints. How do you think Keith Thurman should approach the fight against Clarissa Shields if it actually goes down? Let me make sure I understand. So we're talking about an intergender fight between Keith Thurman and Clarissa Shields. That would be hilarious and unprecedented. I actually think that that would make a serious bag. I pray that they make that bag. You see, as a, as a prosperous man, I want to see other people prosper, and that would be genius. Now, um, he better win that fight, number one. Uh, I think the odds makers are going to be boggled. It's always a great opportunity when you have a uh, something unusual. You have an anomaly. It's a great opportunity for money makers. So I really want to see this. Number one, he better beat the brakes off of her. Personally, I wouldn't do it for any amount of money. I'm not going to beat a bitch up on TV for any amount of money. It's just against my morals. Well, it depends on what the bag, what the bag look like, and what kind of bitch is it. You hear me? <laughs> is it a young MA kind of bitch? But I wouldn't beat up Clarissa Shields on TV for any amount of money. That's just not a saintly thing to do. But I hope he get that bag. Thank you for letting me know about that. That's that's awesome. I don't think they'll even do odds on I, that. I, I pr oh, they probably won't have any odds yeah. on it. But I'll be taking bets. <laughs> 
Kate, we have none of the above said, where can I find black hair women that wear their natural hair locally and internationally? I bet you never got this question. LOL. Never in life have we gotten that question. So black women who wear their natural hair, you're usually going to be finding these among the most educated of the black women. Um, and mind you, the more educated women get in general, ah, it tends to be unpleasant, but you know, what can you do? But you'll, when you might find a couple university women who might wear their hair natural and we're talking about everything from the Afro to the, to the dreads, the locks, et cetera. Personally, I prefer the Afro. You heard me. That's me, baby. Just pick it out for you, boy. I like that. Um, so you got that. Uh, those are going to be the educated women, the ones who went to Howard and what have you, and they fill in real hotep. So you'll catch a couple of them. And uh, if you go to the continent, the women that are going to be most likely to wear their hair natural are going to be the East Africans. Gorgeous, very feminine women. Oh, Lord, don't make me have flashbacks. No, Lord. On Cash Up, we have Key Intuition. Shout That's to the key. key that I think is working on the boxing shoes. Yes, indeed. Yes, and indeed. And we have Ishmael is back and said tuition. Shout out to Ishmael. You caught up? I am. Okay. Let me see what this I think this guy came in before. Does he look familiar? A little bit. I think I did. I did. I did come on one of your live before. Okay. Can um, you hear me? I We can hear you can faintly. You hear We're going to give you 10 seconds. What you got for us? Okay. I was just going to ask you a question about so you're talking about the race thing, right? Um, my question is that do you do you think maybe you talk about it? Forgive me if you already mentioned it. I, I got in on I got on there kind of late. So do you believe that uh it's possible that um intellectually like white folks like could be better than black folks? Like is it possible you think maybe genetically okay, question. like yeah, I'll answer that. maybe they're supposed to pull you off screen because you're a bit blurry, but I'm answering your question. Thank you for that. And I, I do want to encourage everyone else to uh, actually follow what we're uh, requesting, which is that the link was for women. I will answer the question. He asked, is it possible that uh, Caucasoids could be the intellectual superior of Negroids on a genetic level, which is to say that they are born to be smarter? Or more intellectually capable. Is it possible? Yes, it's absolutely possible. Is it possible the other way around? Absolutely. What I've become fascinated with more so is not what is your capacity, but what are you actually using of your capacity? And the greatest determinants of what you will use of your capacity is culture. You see, if you look at the culture of the Asian today, I actually did a, a piece on this uh, for my master's thesis. If you look at the culture of the ethnic Chinese, they spend more time in family, meaning the children are with their parents more time than kids in the West. Secondly, they spend more time studying. So when you look at certain metrics like that, you see that their educational outcomes are not a reflection of inherent IQ, but rather a reflection of family structure, culture, and expectations. Now, further, let's talk about the the IQ thing, the genetic thing, uh, what you want to consider, and, and I surmise that this is the case. It may never be proven. Frankly, I really don't care. But if you look at the environment in which the Europeans or the whites evolved, and you look at the environment in which the blacks or the Africans or the Negroids evolved, these are two radically different environments. You have one environment that's reasonably hospitable. Um, that is of Africa. And you had, like, for example, you track the Bantu migrations, you see that they were moving throughout the continent, you know, unfettered and able to travel and hunt big game. And you have lush places in the continent and you don't have harsh winters. Harsh winters are what you have in Europe. This requires planning. Harsh winters create scarcity. So, for example, if you're living in a place and you have fruit growing from the trees and then a winter occurs, all of a sudden there's no fruit on the trees. You can't scavenge from berries. All of a sudden you have to figure out how to hunt animals effectively. And most importantly, if you want to have a balanced diet that includes fruits, berries, nuts, things like that, you would have had to have thought in advance of the winter and prepared for that. Further, now that you have scarcity, there is less game to hunt. Certain animals are hibernating. You have to compete with others, which would say this would make the European a better planner. This would make the European more ruthless. This would make the European uh, tend to operate in teams better, you know, a small hunting team. So I think that those are things that probably bled into culture as a result of the environment. And often you'll find that when you look at philosophy, um, the philosophers will give an explanation of a people which results from their material environment. For example, Marx was a materialist philosopher.
Hey, there are a few people saying they want to join the men's retreat. I did say the details are in the community tab. If you Correct. can't find that or you have any questions, email support at marquettism.com and we can give you the details. Correct. And the important thing is that we need you to pay via um, Cash App. Um, and if you need to pay via PayPal, we can do it, but it is not preferred. We will give preference to the people paying by cash. And app. you do have to email before you pay by PayPal because there's a different email address. Correct. Correct. Carrying on. We have on Cash App, Justin Time said, it's the black man's fault. We sitting doing nothing. Correct. And, and I'll give you an example. Like one thing that should blow your mind is of my audience is primarily black. And I think that's just because people look and they, they immediately identify. Then we have a... a multitude of people around the world of various ethnicities, but I think they support the work at a higher level, not because they're wealthier, but I think it's because they're more understanding of the fact that my time has value. I have other things I could be doing. And if they want to hear things like this from a person who's actually informed, they support the work. Whereas you have a multitude of black folks. I remember one time I was walking through the mall. I kid you not. This is a true story. I'm walking through the mall in Las Vegas. A guy says, hey, man, I love your stuff. I watch you on YouTube. I was like, okay, cool, thanks. He's selling like some shoe thing, and I don't need it at all. But, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, man, this can clean your shoes and do. Now, mind you, if my shoes aren't clean, I just throw them away. I just throw them away. I don't care. What am I going to clean them for? It's not necessary. Or I'll have my assistant clean it. She can clean it with toothpaste and toothbrush. You do a great job. I don't need your, your product. But anyways, I, I spend on this product to support it. Why? Because I'm a businessman, and I'm calibrated to understand that, if I want him to be successful, if I view him as like me or a part of my community, I have to support him. Or if I want him to exist or I want his ideas to grow, if I have to support him, it won't just happen magically. But black people have a welfare mentality. You look at me and don't realize I won't exist without you. I don't run ads. I don't run ads on this. Google doesn't give me any money. In fact, Google takes money. So if you want me to exist, you have to support it. But the blacks have a, the black Americans, they have a welfare mentality. They have a food stamp, EBT mentality. And that is what I try to tear you out of. That's why I teach you guys how to earn. And a lot of you guys, I've sent out over $100,000 to our followers, black ones, white ones, Asian ones, whoever wanted to hustle, whoever wanted to hustle. Uh, shout out to Jabriz. He writes, Marquette, watch out before black women start pulling up uh, the white character you play, <laughs> right? And then say you're imitating the white man. You dig? Great place. He says, Jabrizi, what white man? Tyler is his own man. You feel me? <laughs> I, <laughs> I've never played a white man carrying on. Now, I want to show you guys something because this is really important. Every time the black female goes to get a, a man, a man, major air quotes. Every time the black female, the black American generally goes to get a man, they get a half of a man. You hear me? They get a half of a man. It's always the most effeminate guy who looks like he works at Starbucks and dresses at the Gap. It's like the weirdest, weakest white dude that normal white dudes don't respect. It's not a white dude who's like, yeah, man, I'm a badass MMA fighter. I'm from Texas. I will race a steed. I'll, I'll break me a steed. It's not those guys. It's this motherfucker right here. Now, let's take a study of this. And woo, we're about to see the faking. Let us learn. And mind you, this, this title it reads, quote, why my husband prefers black women, interracial couple. Now, mind you, anytime I hear someone say they prefer a specific race, I think it's strange in general. I think it's strange, especially if they prefer a race that's not their race. That's weird as hell. You prefer a race that's not even your race? That's weird as hell. I ain't going to lie to you. You heard me? You asked me, what do I prefer? I love black women when they're actually black. Just turns out there's only like eight of them. It's only eight of them. You hear me? They all trying to pretend to be a white woman and I'm not taking an imitation or a counterfeit. You hear me? Hell nah. If I want straight hair, I'm going to get the genuine article. You dig? Just like if I want a pair of off-white sneakers, I ain't going to go to the bootleg, man, and get a fake pair. Hell nah. I'm going straight to the mall, the high-end mall, and I'm getting a real deal. Okay. Hey, for those that were asking about the trip, Mitchell was very kind. He did post where you can find the details. That's love. Thank you, Mitch. He really helping people out. He already got his ticket. He helping people out because it's going to be gone and it's going to be epic. Lord, it's going to be epic. Yes. It, look, and I want you guys to know what happens on men's trip 2024 stays on men's trip 2024 because we might end up turn. Read that for me. It says, 
R. E. Harris says that black people did create their own police, but the government tore it down. It was called the Black Panthers. Same with the Wall Street in Oklahoma. See, this is the problem with the black mentality. See, this is why I really am always so thankful for the students that come to me and they learn. Like if you like, I highly recommend people take Boss University. I really recommend it because it's so global in the way that it lifts you up. It lifts you up economically. It lifts, lifts up your character and your mentality, your manliness. So listen to this. Black people have been so coddled in, in recent decades. They've been treated as children. You, you see what happens to a child when a child tries to do something and it doesn't go right. What do they do? They get frustrated and they cry. They complain. They try to build something with their Legos or they're playing Jenga and everything falls down. Oh, and then they need their parent or their father, or their mother or the government. Oh, it's OK. Here, I'll rebuild it for you. I'll do it for. No, no, don't do it. I'll do it for you. Don't build up your own policing force. I'll do it for you. Now, here's the thing. Whether it's true that the Black Panther Party was destroyed and the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense was destroyed by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and that is well documented. They also destroyed many other black things. Uh, whether um, uh, Black Wall Street was bombed, whether or not that's true, what happens after your enemy destroys something of yours? You either attack back or you rebuild. You see, that's a man's mentality. I don't have time to mourn the ashes of a burned bridge. I need to start building another bridge. And guess what? When I built this next bridge, going to be stronger, more fortified, and I'm going to know to protect it. And let me give a message to the blacks. If the whites are your enemies, and some of you still believe this, if the whites are your enemies today, then why don't you start taking some precautions? You know, like, why don't you start like preparing for that or behaving appropriately? The thinking of the hoteps is so backwards that they would say the whites are our enemies. And then they'd say, pay us reparations. Hold on. So you think they're your enemies, which means your enemies, they hate you. Your enemies want to take you out. But you think they're going to reach in their pocket and give you some money? What? That's not even sensible. And that is the bipolar, foolish, illogical position that most blacks have. And they have this because in some cases, they're just flat out dumb. And in most cases, just they're uneducated. They've gotten a miseducation. And Carter G. Woodson talks about this. If you would click the link below, which I don't think is there, but if you go to. Uh, OK, my fault. Um, if you would go to amazon.com slash shop slash the saint and, and the center, I have a book there by Carter G. Woodson. It talks about the miseducation of the Negro. And most of what you find in your educated blacks or your black intellectual, whether we're talking about a Cornell West, a Michael Eric Dyson, um, whoever you want to name that you think is black and smart, a Tariq Nasheed, a Dr. Umar Johnson, they're, they might be intellectuals, they might be well-read, they might be articulate, good preachers, but none of them are good builders. None of them are businessmen and none of them are revolutionaries. None of them are actual leaders. And when you study the men who have been great in history, what you'll find consistently is that there's a trail of blood behind those men. I just want to be frank with you. There's a trail of blood. The black men have been fearful. You cannot be a revolutionary unless you're willing to spill blood. And this is what I mean. You have to fight if you want a better position, please know if you want to get to the top, there's already somebody there. And guess what? They don't want you there. So if you'd like to take their position or get some of what they got, power and money, you're going to have to fight. You look at all the men in history who matter. Hannibal Barca, Julius Caesar, Napoleon Bonaparte, and the list goes on. These were all men, trail of blood behind. Or look at the Americans. George Washington, he was a military guy, wasn't he? Wasn't he a general? Yeah. Oh, uh, you look at uh, Thomas Jefferson. Was there a trail of tears, meaning they exterminated the aboriginals here, the Native Americans, as we call them? Yeah, all the guys we respect, our founding fathers, cold killers, cold killers. So you're looking at dealing with the most ruthless, vicious conqueror. If, if from a, a people perspective, like 
the the Caucasoid is the most vicious, ruthless conqueror ever. So you telling me you're going to deal with him and send a fucking preacher? You're going to deal with that guy and send Martin Luther King? Talking about, I have a dream. Bruh, didn't he get killed by violence? He nonviolent, but died by violence. That should teach you something. So here's the thing. You need an actual revolutionary. You need a businessman. So specifically with regards to this, they destroy your policing force. You rebuild the policing force. You rebuild paramilitary. You get position in a stronghold. You figure out, are there others who have been successful? These are basics in business. Who's winning? The Jewish people are winning. How did they win? What can we learn from them? They destroy Black Wall Street. You rebuild it. You don't leave it in ashes. After Iraq was destroyed by the American war hawks, did they leave it in ashes or did they rebuild it? <laughs> so what we do is we leave it in ashes and then complain indefinitely. Come on. Hey, we have facts and tuition. And thank you, Mitch, for looking out again because we can't see, but it's his first tuition. Oh, word. Yeah. Shout out to facts. We appreciate you. Truly. I appreciate Mitch for sharing that with us. Absolutely. Shout out to Mitchell. He's confirmed. He's a real one. We have Robert Vall. He's the one that came on screen. He sent a super chat. He said, thanks for answering my question. I apologize for clicking the link. I was too eager for the topic and I wasn't sure of the instructions. Well, I appreciate the support and think nothing of it. We have Jabrizi is back and said, black women always say black men get with the white women for status. I now starting to see that's actually a projection of what they Woo! do. <laughs> Ain't that funny? Because how is it white women is giving any man status? No, white women are definitely useful. Now, you can put them to use. There's no doubt about that. You're, I mean, if you got a brick of cocaine in your truck and you need to drive that across country, I'd much rather have a white woman do it. Oh, absolutely. White women get pulled over by the co police and start talking shit to the police. I was watching a TikTok clip recently. It was outrageous. White woman in New York pulled up on the police, got out her car, walked up to the police and says, hey, God damn it, why are you blocking traffic? You can't do that. Now, black people probably think, oh, they can absolutely do that. They're the law. That's Johnny Law right there. White woman's like, man, move your fucking car. Oh, they're empowered in the society. So, yeah, you can put them to use, that's for sure. But you're correct when you say that they're projecting. Yes, you got a broke black chick, or in this case, a broke African chick, who's trying to get the white guy to make a come up. And she sure as hell did. And we're going to get into that. But the funny thing is, generally, the black guys are already on when they end up with a bad white chick. You heard me? When you're like, oh, you black athletes are always with white girls. See what I said? They're already on. They're already signed and they got million dollar deals then the white girl comes into play but hey here's the thing how often do you see a multimillionaire who's like you know what i'd like to drive a toyota nah, generally they're like give me the rolls royce give me the maybach i'll take the i8 throw the lexus in there and that's just at this property i got some whole other shit i never talk about right you want to upgrade all the shit you got right so they uh, they own with the money and they they add her as an accessory but they didn't use her to get on they were on and that's why she was there these are not those trashy ass white chicks that wear jordans and want to emulate the black female no these are proper white girls that would just as easily be with a white guy but they're like shit you got the bag too i fuck with you you big strong and tall you're better than todd shit you six eight top five eleven i'm going with you buddy yeah, that's all that is. That's a woman trying to take her best option. She like, I could take a man who's wealthy and like enormous and he's going to beast fuck me. Or I could take a guy who's wealthy and looks like an accountant and probably doesn't live as exciting a life. Yeah, I'm going for the athlete. That's basic female psychology right there. Okay, on PayPal, we have Amir said peace to the saints. Classes in session. In a real way. Stop playing. Trey says, every time I interview black women, they say there's black women in a tribe in Africa that have naturally blonde hair and they use that to justify where they, why they wear blonde wigs. Yes. And this is why you don't negotiate. This is why you don't discuss with your inferiors. You treat your inferiors like your inferiors, right? If someone were to come on, just as Dr. Henry Clark said, he says, I, I don't debate these people. They're my inferior. I don't debate them. I educate them. So if someone was to come on, I'd just be teaching. That's it. I'd be teaching. We wouldn't be having an eye-to-eye -eye discussion because they're my inferiors. Similarly, you have black women who are so self-hating that they will search the world to find one excuse to justify their filthy behavior. Now, here's the funny thing. Of those black women who would reference some non-existent tribe in Africa that has blonde hair, which is possible because, as I said, the black DNA has all people's DNA. That's why out of the black, you can create the albino, 
Albinism is a disease wherein you're basically devoid of melanin, right? The hair is white. The eyes are pale. The skin is white, 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 everything. You're devoid of melanin at a dangerous level. The black person who's pitch black, Sudanese black, they can create the albino. And truth be told, the white people are essentially a form of albinism, right? Albinism is just carrying that to an extreme. Just as like a person who's pitch black, that's just an extreme of melanin. Albinism is, is an extreme lack of melanin, and the whites are on the spectrum for on your way to that. But I say that to say this. The black can create the albino, absolute white, out of black. Conversely, the white cannot create the black. It's impossible. That being the case, yes, there probably are blonde blacks somewhere. And naming an African tribe, I think they're making up stuff. But if they were to speak of the aboriginals in Australia, you find people who are very dark and have blonde hair in some cases because they were victimized sexually by the uh, British criminals. That's what Australians essentially come from. They, they were a British penal colony. We say the British threw their criminals, hey, get, send them over there. And that's how Australia was created. But here's the thing. A woman who loves herself, a black woman who loves herself is not going to reference, oh, there's black tribes with blonde hair. Hold on, love. Is your hair blonde? Fuck all that bullshit. Does your hair grow out of your hair blonde? No. Then you're self-hating. Be yourself. And I tell the same thing to the Asian woman, to the Latina woman, and to the white women because very few of them are actually blonde. Why? It's a genetic recessive trait. It is not a dominant trait. It's recessive, which is to say it is going to die out at some point because when you mix genes, a dominant darker features are dominant. So yeah, these people are going to say stupid things, but you expect stupid people to say stupid things. The dumb thing is to be an intelligent person having a conversation with them. Like it matters what you tell them. Even in the Quran, it says they will be deaf, dumb, and blind to the truth. Uh, you heard me? You can give the logic backward and forward. They ain't picking it up. Or if you need something other than a Quranic reference, I know a pimp, he said, I could teach you how to pimp a hoe 30 times and you still wouldn't know, which is to say some people just ain't going to get it. Carry on. You caught up? Okay. We're we going to have to wind it down. Every day to me is payday. You heard me? We got a lot of things we're we going we gonna to have to uh, get to after this. We got a lot of work and a lot of good things. Uh, now let's check this out. This is the, this is typical of the black woman who ends up with the white guy. Oh my goodness. And, and for my whites in the audience, normal white guys, which I know normal white guys are the ones that follow me. I don't know. No weird white guys follow me. In fact, no weird people follow me. Let me know what kind of character this is. I know y'all ain't proud of this one right here. And I want to say as a black man, I'm not proud of this one right here. My husband has gotten a lot of questions on why he prefers a black woman or black woman. Now, first off, already major red flag. Why is that a red flag? That's a red flag because in the Western language, it used to be that if you encountered a woman, you would say, are you spoken for? In the English language, that cultural phraseology means, do you have a man? Are you married? Is there a man leading and representing you? Are you spoken for? Why is this bitch talking? I hate to say it like that, but why is this bitch talking? We have Mr. Tabbitt came in on PayPal and said, carry on. And Paul T at the exact same time came in on Super Chat with the exact same message saying, carry on. Gentlemen. Sir, yes, sir. And they're always typically the first two. In a real way. Yeah. When I say, why is this bitch talking? I don't say that to mean, why is this woman talking? I don't say that to mean, why is this black woman talking? I'm not talking about black women. I'm not talking about women. I'm talking about this bitch. Why is this bitch talking? Because she's out of line. Just like when you're at a proper restaurant in Africa, in Asia, in the Arab world, when the waiter comes to the table to take the order, he doesn't even look at her. He looks at the person who's responsible to pay the check, the leader. What will your party be having? Why is she talking? Furthermore, she's talking on his behalf, she says, my husband has received a lot of questions. Well, then, damn, bitch, why doesn't your husband speak for himself and tell us? Probably because he's a weirdo. He's effeminate. And that's why he's with you, because you won't behave yourself as a woman. 
So you went out to go get the wealthiest, weakest white guy. That's www. <laughs> the wealthiest, weakest white guy you could find. Shout out to the alliteration. And here you are speaking for him like he's a broad. Man, he has gotten this question so many times in some of our videos. Why are you with a black woman? Why not be with someone with your own it's race? Well, today question. I am personally going to ask my husband this question. Why do you prefer a black woman, sir? Now, oh. as I said, anytime you have someone who prefers a different race, you need to be curious and concerned. Absolutely. There's always some self-hatred in there. Secondly, so she just asked him, why, why do you prefer a black woman? She did, she did not say, why do you prefer me, an African woman? Why do you prefer the African woman? She didn't say that. She didn't say, why do you prefer me as an individual? I am an individual. No, she's speaking in broad strokes. What the dumb women like to say are generalizations. It's funny how they like to use generalizations when it favors them. But when you use generalizations to explain something, a common phenomenon, then, oh, you can't use generalizations. Bitch, are you dumb? There's an entire discipline called statistics, which is about generalizations. That's what statistics is, the average, the mean. <laughs> dumb asses. Anyways, uh, so she just basically asked him a question. And uh, here we go. Now, let's listen. Let's uh, notice the timbre of his voice. Does he have depth in his voice? Does he have command when he's speaking? Let's see what kind of character Before he is. Before start, we have Miles in a cash app. He said, good evening, Saint. Just needed some ism on this interaction. Hit a PR at the gym today, and someone I considered a friend walked out rather distant and said he was jealous that I hit my goal. Carried on and said, is he an enemy? What's your perspective on a situation like this? Peace to the saints. Thanks for the great topic. You know, even beyond the word enemy... There's a word that starts with an F that I would get banned for saying. And my first thought when I read that, I was like, boy, is a, that F word. Because look, when I see my people win, <laughs> you heard me? I feel like I won. Yeah, that's how I am. Like, check this out. I came from the gutter. If I see one of my homies that I grew up with pull up in a rose, woo! You, you would have thought I just bought a rose. Oh, we rolling now, baby. We on. And that doesn't mean I need to borrow his car. That means that when he riding high, I'm riding high because we're the same. We cut from the same cloth. I identify with him. If somebody looks at something you've done and they say that they're jealous, they view themselves as apart from you. That's truly evil. That is truly evil. And you know the answer to that question. You keep an eye on that character. Okay, we have 10K said, girl on the left looks like Mr. Popo from Dragon Ball Z. I, I don't, I've never seen Dragon Ball Z, but um, I'm guessing that Mr. Popo is not good looking. Boy, well, I'm put on the spot, aren't I? But I think it's pretty clear. Okay, so that was weird because he's dis displaying the kind of uncertainty that you expect from a female. It's like, oh, 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 oh boy, I'm put on the spot. Are you put on the spot, you dumb fuck? Because you didn't record this live. This is a pre-recorded video in which she decided the topic. And if she's not lying, she says you've been asked many times this question. So no, you're not being put on the spot. You're lying and you're effeminate. You see, one of the things that women love about men is the masculinity, which is in our nature to be decisive even to be impulsive, to leap before we look, to be aggressive. How feminine. Whoa, I am on this bar. What are you, a bashful like a broad? Come on, bro, knock it off. On Cash App, Johnny sent tuition. Shout out to Johnny. And we have Nella said, by that girl's logic, we must act like all other races of men, I guess races of men to get all of the races of women. I think that's. I think it should be racist, not racist. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's correct. That is what the logic was saying. Black woman, sir. Oh, boy. Well, I'm put on the spot, wow. aren't I? But I think it's pretty clear that I do prefer black women. I married a black woman. <laughs> now, obviously, I'm going to be speaking in general terms about black women. But, of mm -hmm. course, 
I have only eyes for my wife. My heart belongs to Aww. her, and she exemplifies Aww. everything that I love Aww. about Thank black you. women. So Aww. everything. So first off, this kind of guy makes me want to throw up, and I really hope that um. You know, one day he's crossing the street and there's a bus driver that's not paying attention. And I'll tell you why, because he is so effeminate that he creates unrealistic expectations. You see, he's the kind of guy that's going to be doing dumb shit, like buying her flowers. Right. And then after she's dumb, uh, done, like fleecing him for his money and she might try to deal with a real one, not realizing she's just a side piece. She tried to deal with a real one. She's like, you never get me flowers. I'm like, so you want me to spend my money? on something that's going to spoil, expire, and die just to show you that I like you? Uh, no, that's out. But he's conditioning her to this effeminate thinking, speaking, and behavior. He is a reflection of the woman that she can't be. The thing that I'm saying, just look at my wife and see it <laughs> reflecting out of her being. <laughs> so here we go. Real quick caveat. Obviously, all women are beautiful. All women are yes. amazing. This is just me based upon. He said two lies. He said, all women are beautiful, <laughs> sir, sir. That's not true, sir. There's a YouTuber I'm thinking of in particular right now. I'm like, that's one example. Y'all know this woman. She's for sure not beautiful. And he said, all women are something else. I don't remember. But when you're using the term all, you're lying. So we have a liar here. But this makes perfect sense because what women often want is a liar. They want a liar and the effeminate guys, the weak ones, the beta males, they must lie to the woman to get her because they lack merit. I kid you not. There's this one little bitty shout out to baby girl. If she watching, she might come across this one day, went to high school with me, right? She went to high school. Now mind you, I was the man in high school. You heard me. I've been a man my whole life. I ain't gonna lie to you. I saw her after high school and I'm going down uh, through old town Pasadena. She comes up to me. I'm with the homie. And we're chopping it up. I'm like, yo, it's nice to see you. She's like, you know what? I had a crush on you in high school. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, I, I believe it. <laughs> you heard me. You wouldn't be the only one. And she says, you know what I really liked about you when it just made me start to like you? She said, I like your, your, your mannerisms. I was like, what do you mean? I was like, my manner? Like the, the way I am? She was like, no, I like your mannerism. She was like, I noticed when you talk, it's like you're painting a picture with your hands. So I, I like the way you move. That was the first thing that made me like you, which is to say this. A man who's actually a boss, you hear me? She liked just the way I move my hands, the swag, you hear me? She liked the way I do things that other guys can't do and don't do. Huh? I don't have to lie to a hoe. I don't have to try to get flowers for a female. I don't have to try to bribe a broad. Shorty fell in love with my hand gestures, you dig? Yeah, this one fell in love with the hand gestures. That one liked the way I spit the game. That one liked the way I dress. This one liked the way I punked her old boyfriend. You know, they like you for you. You don't have to perform for them. This nerd right here telling all kind of lies. You know, all women are beautiful, and I only have eyes for my wife. You know, this boy got to lie to these hoes. He got to bring them flowers. He got to bring offerings. You know, historically, you make an offering to a god. Like the Romans and the Greeks, all over the world, they make offerings at the temples of gods. Why would you leave flowers to this broad? Come on, man. Wait, none of the above said, does this guy shop at Gap? Absolutely. And on PayPal, we have Mitchell came in and said that white male ate too many Fruit Loops as a kid. The, <laughs> exclusively Fruit Loops and Fruity Pebbles and Fruit Snacks and Fruit Roll-Ups. We have Amir is back and said, I informed my friend about the assassin last week. I don't know if he looked you up yet, but he better start. Peace to the saints. In a real way. My personal preferences, okay. my experiences, and my viewpoint. We're here to elevate this black boy. women today. <laughs> and anything that helps to improve race relations. Race relations? I am thinking totally Nelson Mandela. Full. I'm a white man. I love black women. And I know there are tons of white men out there who feel exactly the same way. The Why first are we thing promoting that I have to this? say is, while Strange. black women are obviously... L look at her. Now, here's the funniest thing, bruh. If you love black women, tell Shorty to be black then. You hear me? Why is she wearing a white woman's hair? If you love black women, l let her wear her hair then. Come on, man. What are we lying about? More than their physicality. And black women have been objectified over a long period of time. Let me address this piece. Black women are objectified. Women are objectified. 
let me just keep it real with you guys. Women are objects. Yeah, women are objects, sexual objects. Yes. And you know what the funny thing is about that? The ironic thing is, do you dress these women in these clothes that expose their body or do they do it themselves? Do you tell them to stand on stilt so they can stick their butt out or do they do it themselves? You ever notice when they're standing in pictures, they don't stand straight up. They like cross their legs to accentuate the curve of the hip. An illusion and a lie. A lie. Why do you need to see the curve of the hip? It's a sexual appeal. They are sexual objects. They want to be sexual objects. They want to be sexually appealing. So, ladies, you are objects. Yes, indeed. And here's the thing. I don't even, I'm not even a sexual being like that. These women are such sexual perverts. They wake up and from the moment they wake up, they put their the fake up on their face. The fake up. All this paint. Why? To be sexually appealing. They are objects. They want to be objects. They want to be the most desired object. You look on TikTok and Instagram, you see 50-year-old women. Shorty, ain't nobody looking at your old ass. Why you got 50-year-old women dying in Miami getting BBLs? Like anybody looking at your old raggedy ass. Ain't no dudes who are 50 ain't even looking at your old ass. But you got to get a BBL. Who the hell grandma need a BBL? Hey, we have Ill Rude came in on Cash App, said every white guy that I observe dating a black woman has some mental illness. I don't doubt this is the case with this guy. Absolutely. And we have on Cash App also Orion. I'm not going to say his last name, but you met him and his brother. Absolutely. Shout out to the family. Came in and said peace to the saints tuition. Peace to the saints. Unfortunately, I would still be remiss if I didn't include their physical attractiveness. (laughs) They are incredibly beautiful. They have so many oh, features. Wow. Now, I want you guys to listen. This ball is a cold liar. Listen to this ball. Now, the ironic thing is that he's speaking in contradiction. How is like he's debating himself? He's contradicting himself. Black women have been objectified. They've been objectified. Sexual objects. It's not right. It's not right. First thing he says. But you know what I love about him is their physical appearance. Nigga, what? I'm sorry. But nigga, what? <laughs> You just said they've been objectified. First thing you say you like about them are their physical attributes. See, this was pissing me off about white guys today. They not sharp like they used to be. They not sharp like they used to be. That are just like over the top. If you want to talk about the quintessential attractive woman, it would be a black woman. There's just no question about it. Their hair is amazing. Amazing. That's amazing. He just said their hair is amazing. The white ball ain't never seen a black woman hair in his life. Shit, I didn't, I've scarcely seen a black woman's hair in my life. The white ball don't even know what black women hair look like, but this motherfucker just named this as their chief trait when their chief effort is to make their hair look like a white woman's hair. Oh, here's the funny thing. Look right next to you, dummy. Is that the black woman's hair? This is a black ass African woman. I don't even say that to be racist, but this is a black ass African woman with some motherfucking Pocahontas hair. This is a black ass African woman with some fucking fake Dominican hair. The fuck is going on here? That damn bust a blood vessel on this motherfucker because this this ball is saying the most ludicrous shit on earth. So what I'm saying to you is this. Mental illness. Mental illness. He's crazy. When I tell you guys it's important for us to live among one another so you don't have to be around people who are actually mentally unwell. This dude is mentally unwell. And this girl is dumb too. Let me give some advice to black women, especially if you're dark, right? And I love, I love dark women. I love women in general. When you put red lipstick on, you're trying to emulate a white woman. You might say, Quet, really that deep? Yes, that deep, my friends. You see, black people, we generally have our colorations are, you know, like our lips are not pink, right? Like my lips are not pink. Like my upper lip is more brown. My bottom lip is pinkish brown. When the woman, the white woman gets stimulated, the blood comes into the face. You might call it blushing huh? or it might come into the lips. This is an emulation, emulation of other lips that become engorged in blood when the female is stimulated. So when white women put on red lipstick, this is yet another effort of the female to be sexually appealing. This black woman following after her white mother 
is putting red lipstick on. Do black women blush? I've never seen it. Not a woman that dark. Do black women's lips turn red when they're stimulated? I've never seen it. And furthermore, the coloration doesn't even match up. She looks like a goddamn cartoon doing blackface. She looks like an actual car blackface cartoon with this bright ass red color against her dark brown skin. It doesn't match up. Hey, on PayPal, Amir is back. He said, I currently live in San Francisco and all you see is black women with white guys. I'm from Alabama, so this is new to me. Peace to the Saints. <laughs> Peace to the Saints. I hear you, bro. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Tell me she don't look like this. No disrespect, but tell me she don't look like that. And this was a joke. I'm going to maximize this right here. This was a joke. This was a joke. This was to make fun of blacks. Dark skin, red lips. This was designed to make fun of blacks. Dark skin, red lips. I, I pulled up the Mr. Popo they were talking about, and that's oh dang, the same. dang, that was cold blooded and damn near evil. <laughs> and here she is, dark skin and red lips, but she doesn't realize she looks like a goddamn cartoon caricature of a black person. She's that lost. Paul's back. This is number three for him as well. He said, this black woman is insecure. That's why she dragged this liberal white woman disguised as a man to come on camera Ooh. and boost her self-esteem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On Cash Up, Vernell is back and said, tuition, turn all the way up, big homie. Sir, yes, sir. Amazing. Their hair is so versatile. The texture of their hair, <sighs> everything about their hair. I mean, show me. A okay, so how are you talking about their hair, but you've never seen their hair? Speaking of their hair, whose hair is this? B bitch, whose hair is this? I want to find the motherfuckers who ha whose hair that is. This thing came out of a horse's asshole. How are you going to take hair out of a horse's ass crack and stick it in your motherfucking scalp? That shit is filthy, disgusting, and degrading and primitive. Whose hair is that? And y'all be like, and then you got these dumb black broads that have created an entire industry wherein they get fleeced. You know, it's ironically, it's Asians who are smart enough to make profit off of black women's insecurities. You hear me? Most of the wig, the wig industry is controlled by Asians, chiefly the Chinese. Shout out to them. They're making money off of black women's stupidity and black women have the nerve. Like, this is human hair. This is 100% Indian hair from India. This is human hair. Bitch, what kind of psychopath are you? You scalping motherfuckers wearing their hair? That's the weirdest shit on earth. And when you hear the black woman lie to herself and say something like, oh, you know, black guys act white for white girls. Word, word. I don't think I've ever seen that. When you find the white guys who like white girls, like say a Tiger Woods, like boy ain't acting. He's a golfer. That's his actual personality. It's who this motherfucker is. He's a golfer. Grew up in country clubs. He ain't acting. You heard me? And he liked white girls because that might also be what he grew up around. And some of them, they're pleasant. Jeremy, they're pleasant. You ask a white girl some shit and she'd be giving you responses that you enjoy. Like, you'd be like, hey, do you want to go to dinner tonight? She'd be like, I'd love to. Oh, damn, a black, a black girl ain't never said she'd love to. she start asking you questions like, are you paying? What restaurant? Because you know I only like Mr. Childs. Bit, you ain't never ate at Mr. Childs in your rabbit ass life. But now you want to eat there because I'm paying the tab. Ordering shit you can't afford. Order like your ass is paying the tab. Don't order like I'm paying the tab, you broke bitch. And I don't say this is disrespect black women because truth be told, all the black women I've ever dealt with have been great people. I, I'm like in my head trying to actually think of one that I can say anything bad about and I can't. They've all been really good people. Okay, we have Kendall came in on PayPal. I'm going to correct this how I think it's supposed to read. It says, I married a Polish woman, but something about mm. a black woman with a white man bothers me. I think this idea of a white man raising black children. Am I wrong? You're not wrong for feeling how you feel, man. I mean, if you feel how you feel, that's how you feel. You don't have to justify it. But I think generally speaking, the male is dominant. So, you know, there's this psychological concept of wanting to dominate more of fill in the blank. 
And in identifying as a part of a group, whether it's like the black male, or the black collective, you think, oh, that's something I could have had. You're it's them. You're like FOMO. Like that's a woman I could have had a woman that theoretically was earmarked for me and she should preference me. You're seeing her with someone that doesn't look like you. You feel like you lost out or didn't have a chance. You know, it's a strange psychology. I mean, really, the bitch ain't got nothing to do with you. But no, I get it. I can dig it. Um, and generally speaking, if those kids are growing up under a white male leader, then, you know, he's the leader, like they, they're growing, growing up under his culture. And for a black female child, she has a lot of things that are fairly unique, like just doing a black girl's hair is a whole different experience than doing a white girl's hair. You hear me? I don't know how to do either, but I'd hate to be in the unfortunate position of being a white father, having to deal with a black girl hair, or even show up in a black hair salon. Shit sounds unpleasant, but go ahead. Thank you. Saints, I'll give you a little bit of time uh, as we wind down uh, to send in your comments, questions, tuition. I've enjoyed this time with you all. You know, it's just a pity that the um, 3,000 big mouth broads uh, who are in the comments just for some reason uh, won't show up now. It's strange, but I guarantee you they'll be in the comments. Yes, indeed. Uh, 3.1 thousand comments. All black women, big mad, but they won't come and represent themselves. And why is that? Because at the end of the day, a man is strong and they know that they don't stand a chance. But in this day, I'm one of the few strong men, so no one would come. And I don't blame you guys. You're standing your place and I appreciate that. Yes, indeed. Subscribe if you haven't. Well, Saints, it has been a pleasure to have this time to fellowship with you. Let us end with our tradition, the creed of the assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you. The creed of the assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. And I am going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time, peace of the saints.